iOS 11 is the latest update for your iPhone and iPads. In this video, let's look at some of the top tips and tricks for the iPhone with the iOS 11 update. One of the things we use a lot in our phone is the keyboard. With iOS 11, you get the option to choose a one-handed mode for your keyboard. Now, with your keyboard, if you long press and hold the smiley icon, along with the other keyboard settings, you get the one-handed mode as well. You can select the left or the right based on your selection, and as soon as I select that, I get the one-handed mode available for me to use. Now, if I don't want the one-handed mode, I can always expand the keyboard by pressing the arrow at the far right, and that's going to give me the full-size keyboard. Now you can control the setting as we did here, long press the smiley icon, you get the options. Or you can go to your settings, general, and then find the keyboard, and you have the one-handed keyboard option there to set it as well. The spotlight search is also another thing I use a lot in my phone to quickly search for apps and the stuff that I need from my phone. However, previously all of your search terms were saved. And with iOS 11, if you don't want the search suggestions to be visible, you can just tap clear and that will clear your Siri search suggestions. The next biggest change you will see in iOS 11 with your iPhone is the new control center. This has been completely revamped for iOS 11, giving you more choices and more options to add in the control center. So maybe this is not how your control center looks the time you set up your iPhone with your iOS 11 upgrade, but you can certainly make your control center look the same as I have in my iPhone. To customize the control center, all you have to do is go to settings and go to the control center and there you will have the option to customize controls. There are 17 controls in total and you can have all the 17 in the control center if you wish to. Now one of the cool things you get with this control set here is the screen recording. Now the screen recording allows you to record the screen of your iPhone and then save it as a video that you can either push it to YouTube or you know just share it with your friends and family if you want to show them how to perform certain actions in an iPhone. For example, if you go to your control center, tap on the screen record icon, after a countdown, it will start recording your screen. Now, whatever you do in your iPhone, even your voice is also recorded. So now you can basically show someone how to use the iPhone. Maybe that you want to show them how to use the stopwatch and the alarm clock and the world clock. You can do that. And once you've done with that, you can basically tap on the red bar to stop your recording, which will now save your video in the photos app that you can basically now go and play back. Then you can just tap on the share icon and post it to YouTube directly or your iCloud photo sharing, or you can even do the handoff to your other Apple devices. Now with the screen recording option, if you do want to choose to not record your voice and turn off the microphone, all you have to do is 3D touch the screen recording icon in the control center, and that will give you the option to toggle the microphone audio for your screen recording. So now with the new control center, you've got a lot of icons here. And let's not forget, if you have an iPhone with 3D touch enabled, then you can basically long press and hold to get more options. So here is more options on the connectivity uh, toggles that we have with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. So you basically get more options by just using the 3D touch. So you actually have better descriptions here. For example, if you toggle the Bluetooth, you can notice that it's actually not turning off the Bluetooth. It's disconnecting from the Bluetooth device and same with the Wi-Fi. So that's something to be aware of that just because you toggle the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi icons here, it doesn't turn off, but it actually disconnects from the current Wi-Fi network or the current Bluetooth device. Similarly with other controls, for example, the flashlight, if you do a 3D touch, you'll be able to control the flashlight level. And you have got up to four levels that you can choose and control from. So many of these controls here have 3D touch and some even have more options. So for example, for the notes, you can create a new note or a checklist or a new photo. And similarly, for the camera, you can directly go to take selfie or record video from these control center. I would highly recommend you to look at the 3D touch options available in the control center. The lock screen has also gone through many changes with iOS 11. It's no longer called a lock screen, rather it's actually called a cover sheet. So you actually swipe left to see your widgets and you swipe right to get your camera. This is basically very similar to what you get in your iPad as well. 
But one thing you have to remember here is that you don't see any notifications yet until you actually swipe up where you'll actually get a haptic feedback and you will actually be able to see all of your earlier notifications here. Now, if you want to dismiss your notification, you can always swipe left and then you get the clear option. And if you don't have 3D Touch, you can basically swipe left and tap on view to get the same functionality you might get with your 3D Touch in the newer iPhones. If you use an iPad, you know the cover sheet is also available in the landscape mode. So with iOS 11, if you actually switch to your landscape mode with your home screen and now swipe down, you'll actually get the cover sheet in landscape mode. Very similar to the experience you get in your iPad. Now you don't have to swipe up to see your not earlier notifications you actually get them here in the side view. However, landscape mode of the cover sheet is not available in the actual lock screen. The lock screen still is in portrait mode and not in the landscape mode. If you want to quickly take a note without unlocking your iPhone, you can do that now. Just swipe up to your control center and make sure you have the notes icon. And as you tap the notes, now you'll be able to write your notes straight away from the lock screen and that will be saved in your notes app. So it's really a neat feature if you just don't want to go through the hassle, unlock, search for the notes app and then tap open to write a note. Instead, you can do that right from the control center. Now let's say after a few hours, you come back to your lock screen and you want to take notes again. So you can do the same tap on notes in the control center and it will actually resume the previous note. So now you can basically continue taking your notes from the same note rather than creating a new note from your lock screen. So the access for the notes from the lock screen is controlled in the settings. And if you actually go to the, your notes app and there you will have the option to access notes from the lock screen. And here you can select to whether you want to create a new note every time you tap on the note icon from your lock screen or resume the last note. I would, I prefer resuming my last note because then I can continue taking my notes. And you can also choose which note you want to resume from, whether the one that you started from your lock screen or the one that you actually started after unlocking your phone. And you can also choose a time period until which that note is active from your lock screen. So it actually makes it more secure. So if anybody else takes your phone, opens the notes app, they don't actually see anything because after five minutes, it may be deleted once you choose this option. So I've selected right now never, but you can always select to say once daily after an hour, five or 15 minutes. With iOS 11, you can not only take a screenshot, but you can actually now start annotating and editing the screenshots right away. So you basically get the options to draw, select your pencil, the lasso tool that if you want to select portions of the screenshot, choose your color, and also you get the option to add text, signature, magnifier, and shapes and arrows. So it's pretty neat. So you can directly get into the action instead of you know going to your photos app and then editing and basically saving that photo back. So it's actually pretty cool. It's very powerful. If you haven't used it yet, I would highly recommend you to check this out. And, and you can straight away share that to your friends or social media as well. Once you take a screenshot, you can long press the screenshot thumbnail and that will give you the option to share with your friends and social media straight away. Here is a neat little trick in iOS 11 if you want to manage your icons in the home screen. So before iOS 11, if I have to move apps, I have to move one by one to different page. With iOS 11, I can actually move multiple apps. Here is how you do it. To start selecting multiple apps, you first need to get into the edit mode of your home screen so you can actually move apps. So you slightly tap on the app that you want to move. And once you enter the edit mode, now you can basically slightly move the app that you want to move and then tap on other apps that you want to include or, you know, basically move along with this. So now you can see I have three apps. Now it says four. Now I can pick them up, move to a different home screen or even come back and just release it. So the apps are aligned in that home screen. The live photos in iOS 11 have got some new update as well. 
Now, if you swipe up your live photo, you'll actually get new effects, basically taking your live photo and adding some effects to it. So for example, the loop photo is very good if you actually have an animation for your waterfall here as an example that basically puts the live photo animation into a loop. Or you can basically select the bounce option, which basically goes back and forth as well. So here is another update to the Photos app. Now if you select a photo and tap the share icon, you actually get the option to create watch face. So if you are using an Apple watch, you can actually now select your picture and use that as your watch face. Now, if you go into the watch face options, you actually can add up to 10 photos. So it actually changes the photo every time you turn your wrist to check your time or to check your notifications in your Apple watch. Now you can also have other configurations like for example if you want to have the time at the top or at the bottom and then some of the complications that you can add above the time and below the time. So there are some really cool options to look out for if you actually use an Apple watch. Now it's very easy to create your own watch face from the photos you have. Another nice little update to the Photos app is that now the Photos app supports GIF images as well. So you can actually view any of your saved GIFs from the Giphy app or from all of those GIFs you get from your WhatsApp. And it's basically very cool. You can even share that to your iMessage or other photo sharing services or the social media itself from the Photos app. Now one thing to keep in mind is that Apple now uses a new format called HEIC, High Efficiency Image Format for storing your photos rather than the normal JPEG and PNG format. So if you go to your settings and go to the camera, here you have the formats where you can choose between the high efficiency and most compatible. Now, most of the time the high efficiency option should be good because Apple does a lot of conversion to JPEG when it actually transfers your photo to a PC or even to a Mac, or you can basically select the most compatible and that's gonna leave you with the same format that you used in your previous iOS. Now, given that you know you have to understand choosing most compatible will eat your storage space because the high efficiency format is supposed to save you a lot of storage by using the most compressed format available for your videos and photos. With the notes app you can now scan documents so in any of your notes if you want to add a document just tap on the plus icon and there you get the scan documents so now you can actually point your camera at a document take a picture and use that in your notes very easily ios 11 can now activate do not disturb while you're driving which is very safe and i would highly recommend you to do so to check that option tap on the settings and go to your do not disturb and scroll down to find the do not disturb while driving now you have several options here you can activate that automatically or when connected to your car bluetooth or manually i have chosen automatically and has worked very well for me whenever i am in my car driving you know my iphone goes to do not disturb mode automatically now you could also set auto reply option so auto reply to favorites or all contacts and the auto reply text that you want iphone to send back to them you can always edit and change the text if you don't like that. You also get a new files app which lets you browse all of the locations and other files you have in your iPhone and in iCloud Drive and other online services like Dropbox and OneDrive. So you don't have to go into each one of those apps. Most of the apps now support browsing those files from this files app. So basically here you have your iCloud drive. So if you go there, you'll basically see all of your files in your iCloud drive, or you can go to your Dropbox. Without opening the Dropbox app, you can actually see all of the files here as well. So basically it's a one-stop shop for browsing all of your files, be it whether your files are in the iCloud drive or any other online services. Here's another cool feature with the files app. So basically how you remember selected multiple items to move across your home screen, you can do similar drag and drop functionality in your files apps. If you want to move files to different folder, just slightly hold and press and you will get options at the top to copy, duplicate, move and even delete and other options. But if you want to move multiple items, just slightly tap on the first item and then with your second finger you can actually scroll 
and tap on the next item. So now you'll actually get two and now you can move them to the different folders that you want to move them and that will just drop them to that folder. So it's very simple and very intuitive for you to just use this drag and drop, not only across the home screen, but also in other iOS apps like the files. If you have noticed in your app store in iOS 11, the videos actually start playing automatically as you scroll through them. Sometimes this is frustrating, like you don't want the video to play automatically as you visit them. And if you want to control this behavior, you can with the App Store settings. So go to the settings and tap on the iTunes and App Store. There you have the option to turn on the video autoplay either completely or choose just on Wi-Fi only networks. We use a lot of apps and take a lot of photos, so storage might get through very easily. With iOS 11, Apple has provided us an option to optimize that storage in a smart way. So if you go to your settings, general, and tap on the iPhone storage, you now get the option to offload unused apps and also review large attachments and go app by app to look at any other recommendations you have. So for example, in photos, you might get more recommendations if you are storing on not optimizing your photos from iCloud. So at the same time, if you actually see my WhatsApp, I have around 1.45 GB of data. So I can offload this app if I'm running out of space. Here, the game Real Racing 3 is never used, but it's actually consuming 860 MB of data that is in my phone. So I can delete the app or offload the app depending on my choices if I have to save some space in my phone. To shut down your iPhone, you actually long press the power button and that's going to take you to the screen where you can slide to power off. What if something happens where your power button no longer works? How do you actually turn off your iPhone? Well, with iOS 11, you can go into your settings, general, and at the bottom you have shutdown. And that's basically going to give you the same screen that you will get when you long press your power key. So this setting is really important, especially if you are in trouble. And I wish you are not in trouble, but if you do get into trouble, this setting is going to help you a lot. So under your settings, you have the emergency SOS option, and there you can configure to auto call the emergency service by tapping the power button five times. And as soon as you do that, it will call the emergency service and also send a message to your emergency contacts that you have configured here. So basically this is going to save your life, especially if you are in some danger, you can just tap this power button five times and call the emergency service. iOS 11 has a lot of these small features that makes you more productive using your iPhone. If you are using iOS 11, let me know which is your favorite feature. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you are subscribed to my channel as well. Until next time, bye.